Okay, so in this video we'll take a look at the uh, upgrades I made to the current version of the merger that we're going to be using. So as you may know, uh, on the original, uh, so on the multimeter upgrade, so the original one and the one that I'm going to have modified, uh, there are five filaments coming out and uh, you have to, um, you only use one filament at a time, but you need all those filaments to go to directly to the extruder. So um, in order to do that, you have a few different options. So uh, on the uh, MME2, they're using a, a carriage system, uh, which is actually quite complicated. It has a lot of parts, it has a lot of moving parts, and um, it has its pros and cons, but in my case, I believe that a merger will be more effective and also way cheaper. So, um, let's first take a look at why I'm not going to be using the uh, carriage system. And the main reason is real simple, it is cost. So, um, as you can see here, you have uh, a few things that can be expensive. First, the NEMA 17 stepper motor. This will be 20 bucks, let's say. Um, I'm seeking Canadian dollars, so it might not be exactly, but uh, it's about 1.3 US dollars, so it will be a bit cheaper in uh, US dollars, but that's what I'm going to be using. So the rods, uh, you're probably not going to be able to buy uh, the specific length you need uh, if you buy it online or like I did. So um, another 10, 20 bucks. So 40 bucks here, uh, simply with those two parts. Now the thread rod, uh, another $15. So uh, we are at $55. Uh, and um, that's a lot. So when we're speaking about the total cost of this thing, $55 is a lot when you can simply replace it with a merger. And um, that's what we're going to be using. So uh, how it is going to work. So as you, you also know that this is uh, a sensor. So it's an inductive sensor and there is a metal ball. And when the filament comes through here, it pushes the ball against the sensor. And you can know that the filament has been properly loaded. So I've made a similar sensor, not a similar sensor, but I've also implemented a sensor in my merger. Uh, and it will be a simple switch, but we'll come back to that later. So... Um, it's really simple. You have the five uh, filaments that come in through here with a PTFE tube insert so that it runs more smoothly and that you don't have um, a way smaller uh, like place where it's 3D printed. The PTFE tube will be way more accurate than your 3D printer or and way smoother. So it will cause way less friction. It's like a button tube system. And the place that it, where it's going to be different and maybe cause a bit of friction and um, let's say issues uh, is going to be way smaller than if I had all this 3D printed. So um, this goes through here and you have a switch placed in there and when the filament comes through it activates the switch so you know that you have loaded it. So the switch is also has also an economical advantage um, and does not bring too many downsides because uh, these are a few cents, and uh, when you compare that to uh, an inductive sensor with a metal bowl, um, it can be 10, 100 times uh, cheaper, depending on what type of switch you buy. So um, that's uh, what we're going to do now. I'm going to show you a time lapse of uh, how I uh, modified the previous merger, and then we're going to take a look at the final result. Okay, so design-wise it was really easy. You had simply an insertion uh, inside the merger to fit a switch, uh, a few uh, holes to place screws to hold the switch in place. Um, I had to play a bit with the measurements, so I had to do a few versions to get it right. Um, and I also cleaned up the insides so that it would print uh, properly. So now that we have finished the design, we can go ahead and uh, print it. So, uh, pretty easy, slice it, rate it on its face. Uh, I use adaptive layers so that it would print faster but still keep uh, round edges um, for the filament uh, holes. So now let's take the SD card and um, take it to the printer. Okay. 
no, turning it on. And let's go ahead and start the print. So print PLA, print from SD, and let's hit go. Uh, now you're going to see a time lapse of uh, this exact print. So this was one of the previous versions, but it's pretty much the same uh, from the older one, just uh, with a few different dimensions. Okay, so here is the uh, almost final version of the uh, merger. So as you can see, we still are using uh, a PTFE tube insert. I'm only going to use one right now, even if we you need uh, five for each of the holes, uh, because I don't want to waste um, any material. Um, so you insert the PTFE tube uh, inside the print. So I've made it a bit longer so I can easily take it in and out. And um, now you can see that it works perfectly. So it goes in and straight out. So you might hear a bit of rubbing. It's because I haven't uh, added the uh, pneumatic coupling uh, to couple like the other PTFE tube at the other end. So it's a bit, uh, it's like kind of rubbing against the border of the print and this is making a bit of noise. But as you can see, every single one of them works and you can hear the switch flipping and um, closing the circuit uh, when I insert the, the, the filament. So what I'm gonna show you right now is I'm gonna use a multimeter and uh, actually, um, so as you will soon be able to hear when I've inserted everything, when the switch is, uh, so when the switch is closed, you can hear a beep and that means that the circuit is uh, working properly. So here I insert the cable and you can hear that the multimeter is detecting that the circuit is closed. So um, in this way, we're simply going to connect the switch directly to the uh, main board and we're going to be able to tell uh, whether there's filament that has been inserted or not. And as you can see, uh, this entire system causes uh, very minimal friction. So uh, here you can hear the scrubbing against plastic, but that's about it. And it's really, it's very similar to a normal PTFE tube. Now we may run into some problems um, when using flexible filaments. Uh, if we use uh, a, um, a six uh, NMS 17 motor setup. So uh, when using also the um, MU2 as an extruder as well, um, but We'll get into that a bit uh, later in in uh, the next videos, probably. So uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video where we'll be talking about the uh, economic side of the project. So how much is going to cost, uh, so the price range that I'm aiming, uh, what is the most optimistic price it would reach, and uh, the more pessimistic one. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you later.